All right, guys. Um, today we're going to talk about operating systems. Now, this is a, a chapter with a lot of just a pure memorization, so I don't really like it. But let's just get it out of the way because it is a pretty simple one. You just need to memorize lots of stuff. Um, not a lot of understanding or calculation, so um, not the best chapter for me. But all right, let's get into it. First, let's talk about what is an operating system. Now, the operating system is a software, which is a computer program, which manages many basic functions of a computer. So this thing called an operating system, it's kind of like a computer program, like it runs your computer like a lot. And some examples of operating systems like Windows, Mac, OS, you know, Android, Linux, all of these are types of operating systems. Like you kind of use them and they give you like lots of functions which runs the computer. So if you don't have an operating system, the computer will be very user unfriendly. So without operating systems, the computer will not like be easy to use. And you will like uh, see why later on when we talk about some of the functions of operating systems. All right, now let's see what do you need to know for this chapter. So you will need to know about some of the functions of operating systems. I will not talk about um, all of the functions of operating systems because um, not all of them are important. Just some of them are important and you, you just need to memorize some of them. A second, uh, how it works, you do not need to yet memorize, you know, or, or understand how like operating systems work or provide these functions. And lastly, you will learn about uh, buffers and interrupts and we're going to talk about that in the next lesson the next video All right, so today we're going to talk about the functions of operating system We're going to take a look at four major functions of operating systems and how they will help you uh, use a computer system All right, so first is security and um, What security uh, means is that you know operating system actually allows users to set up accounts for example, if you use like a Mac for the Mac OS system or PCs, you know, Android systems, they all allow you to, you know, set up user accounts, right? And for each user account, the data is kept separate by with other accounts and uh, other users, and they are kept secure and the OS make sure it's sec security by using passwords and user accounts, right? So each user account has like its own data stored with it and it is kept secure using passwords. So operating systems actually uh, allows for security. It's used for security and allows for you to set up user accounts. Um, second one is it manages files. So you will see that on any computer, you can you know, rename, you can copy, you can delete, move files, right? Lots of these functions. And the operating system allows you to do this. Without the operating system, you cannot like move or you know do this to to files, so as you can see, like operating systems are really good. They allow you to you know manipulate files very easily, manage files. So that is the second function. Also pretty straightforward. Um, so third one is multitasking. This is even simpler. So, um, the operating system allows for multiple applications to run at once. So, for example, you can run you know a game in one tab watch YouTube on the next tab, watch Netflix on the next tab. You can do all of these three things at once. The computer can run all three applications at once. So the operating system allows for this to happen. Without it, this cannot happen, right? Now, the last one, and the only one that actually requires some sort of um, detail is that it provides a user interface. So if you don't know what is an in user interface, is like an environment for users to interact with the computer. It's quite a weird or strange definition, but um, all computers, like if you use computers with tablets, you use like a user interface, you know, like the screen over here, like the OS provides this user interface for you. If you wanna use like a computer, without a user interface, you can only talk to the computer using zeros and ones because the computer can only understand zeros and ones. The OS creates this sort of an environment, this sort of medium between the user and the hardware and the computer, right? 
So you don't need to type in zeros and ones. You can use this sort of like a medium, this environment, this user interface to interact with the computer instead of typing in zeros and ones. So this uh, user interface allows you to do the things that you want to do with the computer. So there are three types of user interfaces, graphical user interface, command line interface, and natural language interface. We will talk about them in detail in the later slides. So first, let's talk about GUI, which is graphical user interface. Oh, by the way, just to mention, if you guys think that the pace of the video is too quick, make sure to pause the video when you, you know, copy some details down and just do that. All right. So I'm going to uh, talk a bit quick. So, all right. Now let's talk about GUI, which is graphical user interfaces. It is the interface that we use every single day, basically. A lot of the people use graphical user interfaces. They're like a interface that has windows, icons, menus, and pointers, right? You can you the way in which graphical user interfaces work and you can interact is by clicking, you know, clicking on the things that you want to use and clicking and typing, stuff like that. Clicking on, you know, files, stuff like that. And it is very easy to use. It's the easiest interface to use. Very, very nice, very, very friendly, but it is mostly used by novices and beginners because, you know, it's a bit slower because, you know, it has to show all these types of, you know, files and stuff and windows. So it is often used by beginners or people that are just, you know, not into computer programming or OS. So that is graphical user interfaces, like, by graphical, you can know like there's lots of icons and stuff like that. There's like an actual screen showing. For command line interface, it's a different story. Command line, so you know that, you know, you write, you, it, the way it works is the user types in functions and commands, right? You type in commands and the computer will interpret these commands and execute these commands for you. Now, terminal on Mac OS, uh, is a type of command line interface. You can use the computer using terminal. And the way it works is just typing in commands into the terminal. And it's basically a little bit like coding. And it is really hard to use. So it is often used by experts. But it is also way quicker than uh, the GUI, the graphical user interface, because it doesn't have to show these windows and icons. You can just type commands into it. So that is command line interface. So sometimes they will ask you to, you know, give some of the traits or identify which uh, type of uh, user interface is like an example they give you. So you will need to know like the CLI, you need to type commands into it, right? And there's like this thing and that you don't need to type commands and it has like windows and icons and stuff like that. So this is CLI. The last is NLI and uh, is a natural line interface and this is kind of a weird one um, the way it works is allows users to type or speak commands um, and not in like code or functions like in the CLI command line interface right here you need to type like commands and functions right here you just need to type English commands and the NLI the user interface will interpret your will translate your command into code and an example is Siri. For example, if you need to, uh, for Siri, you can just, you know, tell Siri to open an app and Siri will open the app for you. So Siri, Alexa, these are all types of NLI, natural language interface. So it is easier than command line interface, but harder than graphical user interface. All right, that's it for this video. Hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.